Hey everyone, welcome back to Grace Note Forge. So recently, Vivor was kind enough to reach out and see if I wanted to try their newest electric melting furnace. So today I'm going to do a few test castings and share my honest review on this. I've been using their older melting furnace version for a while now, and even though it's still going strong and working great for larger casting projects, it's definitely starting to show its age. So this furnace comes in a kit and is listed for 223 US dollars on their website. And it has some similar capabilities to their old one, but it shows that it might actually be better for efficiency. It still hits that max temperature of 2100 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's only using 1350 watts instead of that 1750 watts like the old one was using. So that'll be really interesting to see firsthand. And that max temp of 2100 degrees Fahrenheit should be great for most casting applications like gold, silver, aluminum, and bronze, but that's not quite going to be able to hit those higher temp metals like steel or iron. Everything came really well packaged, which is nice because those graphite crucibles can tend to be pretty delicate. So for everything included, you get the power cord, which this unit runs on a regular 110 volt outlet, a small graphite casting mold, a one kilogram graphite crucible, which looking at it actually seems like it might be bigger than one kilogram, uh, but no complaints there. And being made of graphite, these will absolutely mark up your hands. So just make note of that. You also get a three kilogram graphite crucible and both of them have that groove at the top to help with pouring the metal. There's also a pair of tongs, which are made to fit nicely in that little groove at the top of the crucibles. There's a pair of heat resistant leather gloves, which I actually do like these. They're decently comfortable and it's always great to have safety equipment. And there's a really nice user manual, which has a lot of good info on how to operate it but it also includes a useful chart for melting temperatures, and it even shows instructions on how to replace the heating element if you need to, which that might void the warranty, but it's really cool that they added that in there. The furnace has a very easy to use PID temperature controller, which only displays in Celsius, but that's really not too big a deal. It also has a steel grate surrounding the enclosure for the base and the lid which is nice to see because the older version would definitely get too hot to touch. It's nice to see that they added some handles to it, and overall I'm really impressed with the build quality so far. It feels a lot more solid, and the overall design seems to be a nice improvement. So one of the biggest differences that I've noticed is the layout of the heating element. You can see if we take a peek inside, they're actually laid out in a vertical pattern instead of being coiled around the inside. They're also exposed instead of having that ceramic shell like the old one had, and they seem to be placed a lot closer to where the crucible is going to sit. I would imagine that helps with retaining heat and the overall efficiency. And originally I was kind of concerned about the heating elements being exposed, but I later found out that they aren't using nichrome wire, which is pretty common for electric melting furnaces like this. Instead, they're using a iron chromium aluminum alloy, which has a higher melting point than nichrome wire, and it also has a layer of aluminum oxide which is great for corrosion resistance at those high temperatures, and overall it should give it a much longer lifespan. So I'm going to do a test casting with some silicon bronze, and you can see I have some bits of scrap along with some new casting grain. And with these crucibles, you always want to kind of gently load them to make sure that you don't break out the bottom. So I'm just going to be a little cautious with these heavier chunks of bronze and slide them down to make sure they're at the bottom. Then I can just pour in the rest of the small grain. And another big difference that I noticed between this new furnace and the old version 
is the fit of the crucibles when they're actually sitting in the furnace is just so much better. Um, with the larger three kilogram crucible, it's obviously a snug fit, but even with that smaller one kilogram crucible, um, there is just a little bit more play, but it's still way better than it used to be. Uh, you can see here with the old furnace, I never even ended up using the one kilogram crucible because it was just way too loose in there and I wasn't really comfortable with it. So operation for this is really simple, just like the last one. After turning it on, you just select U to adjust the target temperature that you want it to go to, and then P to set that temperature. And I'm going to go ahead and max out the machine at 1150 degrees Celsius or 2100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is a good casting temp for bronze. But if it can do that, then it can absolutely do things like aluminum or silver. So I'm going to go ahead and set a timer to see how long it takes to reach that max temperature. And on their site, it says it takes about 25 minutes at room temperature. And I warmed it up a little bit beforehand just to get rid of any moisture that was in the crucible. So I'm starting at 55 degrees Celsius. And it only took a little over a half hour to reach that max temp. Which is pretty good because it is currently freezing in my shop right now. But an important thing to note is that even though it's at that temperature, it might take a little bit longer depending on the amount of metal that you have in your crucible. So I have about 400 grams in there right now, which used to take me around an hour to melt that down. But with this unit, it took just about 40 minutes, which is pretty good. And I just checked to make sure by using a graphite rod just to stir around and make sure all of that bronze was nice and melted up. So while that was heating up, I also had a burnout cycle going for some skull pendants. So I did a small batch of ram skulls and also some human and bear skulls that were all printed in the James He castable resin. So once these were invested, they went through a five hour burnout cycle and I started heating up the metal in the furnace at around that last hour mark. So the pours went really smoothly. And one other thing I noticed was just how isolated the heat is for the crucibles. Uh, you can see right at that top lip where the groove is for the tongs uh, isn't really glowing red like it used to. And that's probably from the crucibles having a better fit, but that's also a really great sign because it's right around that lip where these crucibles tend to corrode away the most. And eventually they get so bad to where it's kind of dangerous to pick up with the tongs. So I would imagine having that heat down where it's supposed to be means that you would probably get more life out of these crucibles, which is nice because they tend to go for around 30 to 40 bucks a pop. The castings turned out pretty nice, so it's cool to see that this works great with bronze and should handle lower melting temp alloys really easily. Just keep in mind if you're looking into this furnace for melting down scrap metals um, that aluminum cans will not fit in the crucibles. So overall, I'm super impressed with this melting furnace. Uh, they made some really nice improvements on the design and that better efficiency with the heat retention uh, just being able to hit that max temperature in less time, using less electricity, and overall just costing less to use is really, really nice to see. If you're interested in picking this model up for yourself, there is an affiliate link down in the description if you wanted to help out the channel. And I'm going to be doing more casting projects with this furnace in the near future, so stay tuned for that. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.